All right, let's see. Sorry, I just went live. Oh, hello. There's already people here. And I'm drinking on my Stitch Method mug. Ooh, look at that. Which, which I got the dark one. I suggest getting the lighter one. Anyway, it's a good mug. Mm. Excuse me, I slip my coffee. Sip my coffee. All right, we're just going to wait for a couple minutes. Um, I'm going to discuss what's going on. First of all, the chat's going to be off for the first half or the first portion of this lesson. Okay, so the chat's off. So for the chat that you guys can see, if people can just let everyone know that I'll be taking questions about um, the Eyes of the World and Blues Master Class Part 2, which I really need your help on, after I get through Eyes of the World. So, um, really quickly, um, I'm just going to wait a couple more seconds. If you're watching this in, in replay, I'm just waiting until I get a lot of people here because I kind of want them to, to um, be here when I start, so you can kind of fast forward. I'll, I'll wave dramatically like this, and so in the replay, you can <laughs> fast forward and see me waving. All right, there's a lot of people here. Here we go. Okay, so, um, first we're going to do the uh, Grateful Dead's Eyes of the World Jam. Uh, I got my deadbolt ready to go. Um, and then my pedals are working. This is good. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna discuss that, and there's gonna be a lot of talking first, lots of talking, uh, right? And because I I did two videos, and both of them had technical issues, I'm just over it. So we're going live, we're doing it live. Who knows what's gonna happen live? All right, so let's get right down to it. I hope you guys are have your guitars. Um, the Eyes of the World Jam by Grateful Dead. First and foremost, uh, I'm. I got to lead in with, uh, this is incredibly hard. Uh, I can't play it anything like Jerry. Um, I haven't heard anyone, anyone really play it like Jerry, but you can get a taste of how to do it and you can do it your way, which has always been my like mantra, like do it your way, but at least we understand. Um, so let's get right to it. When I hear Jerry Garcia solo in eyes of the world, um, it, it, it makes me picture him like having buckets of glitter and confetti and just throwing it to the audience for like five minutes at a time, nonstop. I mean, the stamina of his mind and his fingers is incredible in the song, and uh, his playing is, is so um, happy and ethereal. So let's get down to it again. First, we have to take a look at our chords. Now, here's a preface. Uh, we're just going through the jam, and uh, the chords, shockingly, um, don't really have a centralized key. And some people right now might huff and be like, what? But it, it really does not. We start with an E major 7. Uh, which is your first chord, which so uh, let's see, seven, sorry, seven, nine, eight, nine, seven, and E major seven. Now, here's where a lot of my talking comes in. Every tab, every chord chart I see, says it's a B minor. I'm not not saying it's a B minor. It's just I don't hear it. I don't really hear the B minor. Now, if I'm wrong, you can be like, dude, you are so effing wrong, right? You can do that, but. I want to prove. I want. To, I want to state my case, my claim, which is the E major seven. When I hear the band playing it, I hear this effect, this kind of effect going from the E uh, down to um, to a D type of chord. I hear this movement. Now let me. So what I'll say is this: I hear this E major seven. don't hear an E major 7 down to the it just sinks a little too much for me and when I'm listening to to um, either Bob Weir I've seen pictures of Bob Weir and the only and the only thing he gives me is a chord that looks like this and you're like well it could look like a B minor but it can also look like a D so I was talking to my student Jeff and I hope Jeff might be on this but again the comments are off so I can't see just wait until I turn them on and uh, it kind of struck me like of course it's a D6 chord and what a D6 chord, to make a long story short, it's a D major chord, which is D, F sharp, and A. And um, and you're adding the B, the sixth. And you get a chord like this. Like. Or you can get a chord, here's a sixth chord, here I'll play it really tight. So, does it really matter? Does it really matter? And the answer really is no. We'll talk about that because whether you're playing a D major chord, a B minor chord, or a D6, they're all going to use the same scale to be soloed on top of. And the question is, well, what scale? So let's go through that again. We have this E major seventh chord down to a D, D or D6, 
um, D chord, you'll hear a lot of different things going on. It's very, very free in that stage. I just don't, I can't commit to the B minor. And the D major and the B minor are relative major and relative minor, and so we can get away with that. But the more I listen to it, I hear more Ds than Bs. But in Jerry Garcia's soloing, which will explain that part, he gets, he covers all that ground. So let's start again on the E major 7. Well, the chat room isn't on, but what kind of scale are we going to use on top of an E major 7? I'll take a sip. Hold on. Coffee, coffee, coffee. Mm -hmm. Did it just drip? Did it just drip on my mustache? Okay. Um, e major. We're going to use an E major scale. So I'm going to play just E major. I'm going to vamp right now. I'm just going to vamp this chord. Here we go. Okay. You can hear it in the background. And so now I'm going to choose this uh, e, e major scale here. If you want to know the frets, 12, 14, 11, 12, 14, 11, 13, 14, 11, 13, 14, 12, 14, 11, 12. Now I'm going to stop this for one second. We have an E major 7 chord. Well, what is a major 7 chord? It is a 1, it is a 3, it is a 5, and it is a 7 of a major scale. So guess what? Those are your target notes. The 1, the 3, the 5, the 7, the 1, the 3, the 5, and the 7. So you have these arpeggios to really conquer. Okay, you really want, oh, and the 1 right there. And um, I will, if you like this lesson, check back on it. I will be making a chart for this one on how to do everything I talk about in about three places. It's probably going to be a huge chart, but I'll, I'll do a chart for this because you want to be able to do it everywhere. Stop talking. So now, Here's the thing, and I've always kind of preached this, and I don't know how many times I've preached this on Stitch Method, but I preach it to my, my private students, which is, um, if you have a chord that has an extension, like an E major 7th, well, that's a very important note, because it could just be an E major, right? But they chose an E major 7. So what does Jerry do a lot? Well, he tags the major 7 a lot. So I know where they are, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all right, and I'm going to use my E major scale. I'm going to use the threes because those are those. That's the major component. I'm going to use the root notes, but I'm really going to shine on that major seven. Let's let's listen. Okay, so the major seventh. Now for the second chord. We have an E major chord, uh, an e, uh, e major seven, and down to a D six, D, B minor. Doesn't matter because what Jerry Garcia does is he covers the entire ground, and I really think that the band has freedom because a D chord, B minor, and D six they marry together quite well. We start an E major seven. The second chord, the intro is a sixth chord, so I have a creeping su uh, suspicion they they use a D six. So what do we do over this? Well, people are thinking probably well if it's a D chord and we're doing D six, a D scale. And I'd be like, you're wrong. And I, and I was wrong when I first like had this idea. Um, and then I listened to Jerry. And um, what's happening is, and before I get to it, I forgot to mention, there's two jams. There's a first jam and there's a second jam. And the second jam is a smidge different. It is the second jam that holds the key to the first jam. Um, he is going to play an A chord. And the reason being is that second jam actually goes to an A. And when uh, an A scale, excuse me, an A scale, because the second section goes to an A, we'll get there very soon. All right, so now we have an A major scale on top of a D or B minor. So what's happening? Well, if we play an A major scale and you focus on the D, you get a D Lydian because it's the fourth uh, note of A. If you focus on the B note, which is a possibility, you get B Dorian. Um, but what he does, absolutely without doubt, is he plays the A major scale and he focuses on chord tones, all right, very important, and he also focuses on the D6 chord tones, putting the Bs in. So a D with an added B right here, 12th fret, that's his secret weapon. The D is a D, F sharp, and A, and he adds a B in. If you listen, the notes that he pauses on are Ds, F sharps, As, and Bs. We can say it's a D6, you can say it's a B minor 7, you can say potato, potato this is what he's doing. So now, let me do a back and track where I'm going to move the chords. I'm just going to play a simple D just because it's what my ear hears, but you'll see he emphasizes the D6. So here's E major 7. Okay, so I got the E 
major scale, focusing on the sevens and the threes. Then I have this A major scale. I should show you the A major scale, shouldn't I? All right, A major scale, uh, here's your A major chord. So we're gonna start right here in the pinky, and it's gonna be 12, 9, 11, 12, 9, 11, 12. Nope, I lied to you, let's start again. 12, just fire me, everyone, just fire me. Uh, 9, 11, 12, 9, 11, uh, 9, 10, 12, 9, 10, 12. Go there if you want to go back all the way. Uh, 12, 11, 9, 12, 10, 9. But we have this major scale, this A major scale. It's very important. The um, the second jam will make it more obvious. So now he's going to play this scale, focus on his D chord tones, also his D6 chord tones. Um, and, and again, the chart that I make will have these all pointed out. But listen to what happens. Before we move on to the second jam, that's the first jam. E major seven back back to D six, B minor, D, however you want to call it. It's the same scale, it's the same notes that Jerry's doing. Little little catch, two little catches. Number one, if you listen to the version without a net and some other live versions, you hear him do something like this. Here's my E chord. He takes the one and the major third, and then he slides it down to the D when the chords change. I'll do it right now. One move that he can do. I know I'm going fast, but you have this in the replay, and it's going to be real long. And I apologize. Um, the other thing I want you to take note of, and this is super Jerry stuff. Okay, if you look at this A major scale that we're playing on top of the D6, B minor, D chord, whatever. Um, nine, ten, twelve. If you notice, if you were paying attention earlier, this note right here is the major seven of the E major scale. So it's very, very often that he will come off the D chord, climb up the scale, and get right about here, and when they change the E, hit the major seven. So it sounds like this cool little chromatic run. He gets there and it'll shift over to an E major. Let's try it, shall we? <laughs> Okay, so now, really quickly, I'm just gonna turn the chat on, and all I wanna see is, is this making sense? Yes, with a thumbs up, or yes, or no? Hold on for one second. Sorry to do this in the, on the replay, but here's the chat coming on. Let's see, hold on. All right, how are we doing? Okay, let's see. <laughs> is this making sense? Is it working? Uh, I, if, if, I just wanna see yeses or noes. Yes, 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 yes! Thumbs up and yes, yes. Okay, everybody, thank you, thank you, thank you. I just wanna make sure, um, uh, is, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Saint of Circumstance. Yes, okay, I'm going to turn the chat off. We're going to get to the second jam, okay? Here we go. See you guys. Hey, Fred Instruments, how you doing, man? Loving the guitar. All right, here we go. <laughs> so here we go. All right, our chat's off again. You'll have to watch it again, but we're here. I'm going to turn it off. Here we go. Oh, all right, okay. All right, hello, everyone, back on the replay. Um, sorry for that brief uh, intermission. Just want to see how it was going. The second jam. Okay, the second jam. E major 7. <laughs> Actually, let me just get the loop going first. You'll understand it. E major seven. All right, let me clear my loop out. Bam! I'll take Down to the D. A. Back to the E major seven. Now, E major seven, got the B minor, D6, D, whatever you want to call it, down to the A. And you'll hear it, they change it. And again, what's weird? is we have A's, D's, and E's, and we're thinking one's fours and fives, but we're not we're not in a key that E major seven really throws us through a loop. Because if, if if we have an A, D, and E, you're thinking A is one, D is four, and E is five, and if E is five, it needs to be played as a dominant major seven. But this is the Grateful Dead, so they change things up. So we have to change our scales, which is what's happening. So now, all you gotta do, it's the same exact thing. You're gonna play the E major for the, um, the E major, for the D, 
D6, B minor. You're gonna play the A major, focusing on the D chord tones. And for the A chord, guess what? I can't see you typing, but I know it. I know that you know it. We're gonna just play the A major scale with the A major chord tones. There it is. There's your A major chord. 12, 11, 9, 10, 9. Okay, that's a little Trey, if Trey was playing. <laughs> okay, um, but we're talking Jerry. So Jerry's gonna use his scale. Okay, he's gonna use his scale to climb to those notes and have a little conversation with the audience, which you can tell he does because this song is brutal to listen to. Brutal as in, I should have said beautiful. You almost want to cry. So listen to how when the chords change, I'm going to go from the D arpeggios or the, or the D6 or the B minor, they're all the same notes, down to the A uh, chord tones. This is what I'm going to see with my hand, with my eyes. I'm going to play this with my fingers. I'm going to play the scale and I'm connected back to the E. I just want to make sure I clear, uh, clarify that. E major scale for the E chord, A major scale on the D chord tones for the D, A major scale, a chord tones for the A. Here we go. A. E. D. A. E. keep them going. So this is just about the jam section. Whew, I did it. Oh my god. See? 16 minutes. The original video was 22 minutes. Anyway, 16 minutes. I think I explained everything. So let me just wrap up. First jam. E to the B minor, D major, D6. How we're going to think about it. You're going to use the A major scale with the chord tones. And the second jam is very similar. It's just you're going to do the D part for two beats and then follow it by an A. Go listen to it if you haven't heard that before. It's it's most definite in the, in that in that song. Um, you want to slide some chord tones together. You want to use that chromatic effect of going from the A major scale into the major seven of the E major scale, and that is it. I'm actually quite proud of myself. I did it, and not a lot of um, hiccups. I'm gonna take a sip of coffee as a congratulations, and I'm gonna turn the chat on, and then we'll chat a little bit about this, and then we'll talk about Blues Masterclass two because I really need your help. I know that's been a while since Blues Masterclass one, but there's a reason for it. Let's talk. Okay, chat is on. Whew. All right. How was it? Yay! All right, uh, was it good? Hey, Dan. Hey, Daniel. Mm. Why the A major scale? Okay, so thanks. The A major scale because um, the E major 7 is not in the key of A. So it uses the E major scale. And then once you slide down to this D, you have a D followed by an A. So they're kind of treating it as a 4 to a 1. So they're staying in this tonal center. Like the E, um, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm, I'm thank you. <laughs> Thank you, you guys really liked it, that's awesome. Um, the E major 7 is out of key, so we have to play the E major scale. And again, once they slide into D, whether the original jam or original version had the A on that first jam, um, you can lock yourself into a key. And um, <laughs> and so he chooses the A major scale, which really can be the B Dorian or A Lydian. Um, uh, back and track. Oh yeah, I'll make some back and tracks. Right, I'll have jam A and jam B, and um, I'll definitely get the charts up. But uh, give me like two days. The charts are gonna be good, I promise. What scale is being used in Gamora? Um, let me figure that out. I, I have to think about it. Can you uh, convince Fred to give out coupon codes to your subscribers? I I don't know. He's listening. I can't do that. I don't want to take money from him. But let's see what we can do. Oh, can we just talk about something really quickly? This is crazy. Okay, you guys can't see this yet. Um, Sorry, uh, explain why you're calling B minor 7 and D. Okay, I will in a second, but this, this is, is crazy. Okay, so match that like button. Um, you know, we, me, me and Sean Daniel, you know, you know, we keep track of our subscribers and stuff, and today, you, you guys can't see this, and I don't know what happened, but, um, <laughs> the beard of knowledge, I've, I got an, an enormous amount of su subscribers today. It's a fact where I think it's a fake or a glitch or something, but I'm asking you just in case, like, anybody here is from something that happened the past couple days, because I'm talking, like, an enormous amount. It could be a glitch. I'm not saying anything, because when you look on my channel, from your perspective, it looks like I still have about 55,000, but, um, anyway, so I'm seeing if anybody's here from some sort of weird recommendation. All right, so, um, what was the question? Oh, um, okay, so why the D or B minor? Um, all the chord charts say B minor. Um, oh, maybe, yeah, I saw that someone posted something on Reddit Guitar. Um, oh, so it's set, okay, hold on, Cheddar Kung Pao, it, sh it says 86,000 right now? Oh my God. You guys do realize because it says it, you, you see, Tr Trump mentioned you 
What? Oh yeah, try. I have a friend named Trump. Okay, time out. Time out. Do you got? It says it now. Holy crap. Holy crap. I woke up with 54,000 subscribers. Yeah, see, his says 54. Some say 86. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. Uh, that's literally double. Yeah, so it, the jury's out. So if it goes back down to 54, it's it's an increase of 32,000. Yeah, oh my god. Oh my god. Hold on, can we just sit and ponder that? Uh, oh, other channels are saying the same thing happened? Okay, then it's a mistake. Okay, if other channels... If other channels are saying that they've got inflated subscribers, that's fine. I'm cool with 54. Don't worry. Okay, so anyway, like, if it's a glitch, it's a glitch. Okay, so now, um, I'm going to end up the questions with, um, thank you for everyone, though, for ev all the support. All the support. All you guys. I mean, you guys are awesome. All right, so now, um, well, thank you. So uh, I'll, I'll wrap up any last questions about um, the uh, Eyes of the World jam. And um, I'll just take. I'll see if there's any more of them. <laughs> if I have a million, that'd be nuts. Um, okay, you got. He's, that's so weird. All right. So now, here is where I need your help. Blues Masterclass Two. Oh, B minor seven. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, what D chord? Okay. So B minor seven. Okay. So that was the question. If when I listen to Jerry solo, he's sometimes coming on in, on a D on top of the chord. Sometimes he's coming um, uh, through. Um, an F sharp, which is the major third of a D chord. Sometimes he's hitting the A, which is the uh, fifth. And sometimes he's hitting the B. And like, yeah, that D6 chord. Okay, so so what happens is Jerry Garcia is highlighting these notes here, um, which if you look at it from the order of a D, D, F sharp, A, and B, uh, that is a D6 chord. That is when you take a major chord and you just add the six to it like this. Okay, so you have a D chord here and you're adding a six. I mean, like, you can do it so many different ways. But this looks like a D chord. I, I see Bobby doing this, and that's... Jury's out in that, man. Like, there's a D chord. You can see the D chord if it was a G shape. If you do this... Actually, I see him doing this. That's where it is. I, I don't know, man. You know, it's a D chord or a D6, but Jerry Garcia is highlighting those chord tones. Now, if you look at it from the perspective of a B minor chord, well, what is that... What is that... Um, not the D doing in there, but, like, how does a B minor chord fit into it? Well, B minor is a B... Uh, a D and an F sharp, and it's like, whoa, those notes sound familiar, but there's an A. And if you add an A to the B minor chord, you get a B minor 7. They have the same exact notes, but they're rearranged in different orders. So, um, do I do any videos in drop D tuning? No, not yet. Not yet. Maybe some Moby Dick by Zeppelin, right? Okay. Um, but, um, so, the jury's out onto what the band's doing. Phil Lesh never hits a root note. Bobby's playing all of his chord inversions. Jerry Garcia is highlighting the four notes of a D6 or B minor 7. And he's on the A major scale. It's Jerry and Garcia. Okay, so now, um, <laughs> yes, if you if you win the festival, I will come out and play. All right, so now, um, uh, I don't have a dark star. I have an Ernesto, but um, if I had a dark star, I knew I'd love it. Okay, so um, that was intense. Okay, so now, Blues Masterclass. Um, I, I'm glad that you guys want to learn more. Let's just talk about Blues Masterclass for a second. Um, just by a show of thumbs ups or me or no, I, whoever took the Blues Masterclass Part One, first of all, thank you. I know it's it's really I'm getting a lot of nice compliments from it, and I can't thank you enough. But here's the problem: I filmed Blues Masterclass Two, and I was watching it, and I always try to watch things. Um, I always try to watch things from a student's perspective, and here's the problem: right now. There's either 54,000 of you, or there's 86,000 of you. That's a lot. That is a lot of people. And I am, um, hey Kevin, um, I always want to make sure people know where they are and, and what I can do to help fill the gaps. You know, where one person can take Blues Masterclass 1, and another person, they can walk away with, uh, with two different sets of questions. So, I know. I know that with Blues Master Class 1, the cat is out of the bag. You're like, whoa, this is how the blues works. Look, so I have this pentatonic, I have these notes, I have this, and, I, and we have forms 1, 2, 3, and 4 that we locked into. Blues Master Class Part 2, already I've finished 4 and 5. Those are already done. Dan, with the donate. Oh, it's so funny, I can like, touch it like that. Like, um, <laughs> Thank you, Dan. That's very kind of you. Um, so, so, um, <laughs> thank you, Dan. Um, I want to hear from the people who have taken it, what kind of questions you have or what you want to see from Blues Masterclass 2. 
because, like I said, Blues Masterclass 1, I know, was a huge eye-opening event for a lot of people who took it. I get the reviews, I get the emails, I do, and I, and I reply back and I hear the excitement. But the problem is Blues Masterclass 2, it's not, it's, not about, it's not about blowing your mind anymore, it's about taking what you know and putting it together. So I just want to see what kind of questions you really have. Like, I'm going to sit here, and what, what do you want to see from Blues Masterclass 2? What kind of questions do you have? Um, where <laughs> The shorter videos instead of long videos, where you say, pause the video here and practice. Um, shorter videos instead of long videos. Okay, so little shorter chunks per, per thing. That's cool. You know, I should be writing this down, right? I should actually have some sort of responsibility where I take a piece of paper. Thumbs up, Clad 2. Uh, rhythmic. Okay, rhythm. Okay. Break down people's styles. Oh, okay. So on rhythm. Now cheddar kung pao. Hold on, hold on. If I don't, if I don't address, if I don't address what you just said, type it again. Um, cheddar kung pao. One thing I'm gonna do. Good. I'm glad you said that. Is um, I listened to a ton of blues, and what I did is I took the common, what we call riffs, which I hate, but I took the common moves, and I wrote them down like mathematical equations. And we, and I'm going to film now because that's what I wanted to do how these different riffs work in all the different pentatonic boxes because so that you're thinking more about the intervals than you are about the riffs. Okay, so um, rhythm, um, and then I'm going to write uh, styles. Okay, good. Okay, I like to see full implementation of all modes in the blues. Well, Tom, that's going to be hard because um, blues really, well, that's a, that's a good question. It, it's really weird how you look at it, Tom. You know, that Mixolydian uh, Dorian thing that I did, a lot of people are like, oh, well, that's just a blues move, a major minor pentatonics. And like in the blues, that's what it is. But the blues, we don't really talk about modes that lot. Okay, a lot. And I'm being serious. You might hear a lot of guitar teachers talking about modes in the blues, but it's not. It's more about the pentatonics um, on top of the chord tones. Okay, so I'm going to kind of simmer that. I don't mean to sound rude. It's just, you know, you throw in a Locrian or or super, or super Locrian. Um, where can I get this class and the cost? Um, it's thirteen dollars, and if you go to any of my videos, some of my videos, my more popular videos, there's a link in it below. Um, lessons, okay, blah, blah. same moves in different boxes, okay, same moves, same ideas in different boxes is where I'm headed. Um, let's say uh, rhythm styles. Okay, I'm gonna ask you a question. Do you guys who have taken Blues Master Class One, do you know how to play? all of your chords all over the place without batting an eye. Do you want a blues caged chord um, kind of definition, um, extended 12 bar blues? Because I'm, I'm really debating on the blues caged chords to get some rhythm guitar. Yeah, let's do it. Cage chord blues, uh, blues cage chord, right? Okay, and that's, that's all I needed. I'm gonna do some rhythm, some styles, and the blues cage chord stuff. Done, and there we go, all right? And that's, yes, that's, see, that's a problem. So this case, in Blues Master Class 2, Blues Master Class Part 2 is going to have a blues cage chord system so that you can sit and play, like, kind of, I have a video or two, but you can sit and, hey, that'd be great, you know, play, like, and kind of move around, and when you know what chord you're playing, just it, when you know what chord you're playing, like in Blues Master Class Part 1, you'll be able to play the pentatonic. So we'll put that stuff together. All right, so Blues Master Class Part 2 is officially kind of sealed. It's going to have uh, Form 4 and Form 5, the continuation of Form 1. And um, then we're going to do some rhythm with the Blues Cage Chord and some popular riffs. We'll end it there, and we'll see if we can get a Blues Cage Chord 3. Um, the solo examples are going to be kind of uh, small chunks and then practice applications. I will do that, Cage Rake. By the way, big fan right there. I know. Um, and thank you. You're awesome. Um, okay, so that's pretty much it. That's my live feed. That's my live feed. How was it? Was it good? Um, Steve Howe, thanks for the lessons. No problem. I, I can't thank you enough. If it's Which do you prefer, Fred Wolf or Deadbolt? I don't have a wolf. I have an Ernesto, and I have a Deadbolt, so by, def by default, Deadbolt. Um, <laughs> um, can we get the stream uh, 100 likes before Stitch leaves? How many likes? Um, oh, look at you. Look at that. I like these likes. No, whatever. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, thanks for this. You're awesome. Thank you. Um, beard lessons. You know, you just got to take naps. The more naps you take, the more... <laughs> Look. Oh, my God. Uh, great lessons. Thank you, Fred. Great instruments. Come on. You know that. Um, so, oh, my God. You guys are really hitting those... You guys are hitting that like button. Like, I'm just, am I going to sit here? Do you want some... <laughs> Uh, thank you. You guys are great. Um, okay, so the next log on, um, what kind of wood is the deadbolt? That's a great question. If Fred is listening, what kind of wood is this? I, I'm not... I, it's funny. I, I should have this... Uh, there it is. Holy shit. This is all. All right, guys. 
Very good. Okay, so watch this in the replay. Thank you, Fred. Um, I found your page, brother. Really dig it. The fish and dead stuff. I love it. Um, thank you. I'm going to be doing more every type of guitar stuff, not just fish and dead, just everything. Blues and everything. You guys are awesome. I can't thank you enough for being here. Um, thank you for your input on helping design Ashwood. Ash um, is the answer. What is this guitar made out of? It is Ash. Um, and... Um, I want to wrap up by saying a couple things. Uh, a, thank you, B, Blues Master Class. I'll have it done real soon. Now that I heard a little bit of the voices, because if you guys have the questions, everyone has the questions. How do you get the stash lesson? The stash lesson you have to purchase on YouTube, and you just buy it on YouTube. If it's not available in your country, let me know, and I'll make it available in your in your country. Uh, stash lesson, stat, stash. Wait, are you talking about the stash, stash lesson I have on my channel? Chords, chords, chords. We'll do more chords, absolutely. Um, Jimmy Herring. Uh, you know, I was just, man, I was just listening to Jimmy Herring. Um, we can do a ton of stuff. Um, I appreciate it. How about doing a series on chromatics? Well, CJ, chromatics are, those, ha, <laughs> ha, you got to know how to use chromatics. Maybe I'll do a lesson on chromatics. Uh, what, what's a chord? That's a great question. With that, I will end the stream. Thank you so much. Hey, Sean Daniel, more guilty pleasures. Look for Sean, Ian and Sean in the dawn tomorrow. Um, Hey, Barry, Barry has a stitch mug. Barry has a stitch method mug, but his is the orange one. This is the dark gray. You can't really see my my face there. <laughs> All right, uh, in the mind of the edge. Oh, that'd be good, the edge. Um, how about um, on certain exercises, bluegrass. I'm studying bluegrass, so that's going to take some time. Salty blues time. All right, guys, listen, thank you so much. Sean, I'll see you tomorrow. Peter Townsend, that's good. All right, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank uh, you. It smells like uh, rich mahogany and gladiator's blood. There you go. Bye, guys.